Have I got food on my face? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're all good. I think you are absolutely fine. Um, right. I'm pretty sure everything is working. Yes, everything's working. There we go. Right. Um, bit of a delay starting on my part, so I apologise on that. Going to get nice. straight into who's in the chat today, who's in the our hangout, and then we'll go through the chat and go through who's here. So we have Luke from Luke's APS. How do guys? It's me. <laughs> well, we've got Michelangelo. Hello. And there's myself. So there's three of us this evening. Um, let's have a quick flip through the chat. I didn't think about this. I've got this on the other computer instead. So we've got a lot of people turned up very early today. I think the earliest was about 20 to 12, um, which was they super are, early. That's yeah. going to get a front row seat, that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And then there was a bunch of people around 12 o'clock waiting, and then we've had others from about 6 o'clock. So thank you to everyone who's been super keen to watch this show. <laughs> um, I'll go through the latest comments who's here. So we've got Surreal. As always, we can't start a show without Surreal being in there. Armour Freak, uh, Brain Spider, Sonic Knight, Tim Lawrence, UK Pagan, uh, Ronnie Dodd, Lord Tattoo, Evo Slodic. I think I pronounced that as best as I can. Akaria. Rower, Blade of Templar, Vaughan Killian, Oric Love God, oi oi, Big McDan School, Fell Hate, Graham Rigg, Gary Waddingham, uh, Adrian Trevor, Mark Potter, you're right, Mark, Cut It Custom, that's a new one, welcome, Sean Jewett, uh, welcome, Sean, Steve Small World, quite like that name, welcome, Stephen Small World, I know him, he's one of mine, I think. Oh, okay, well, welcome. Um, Cut It Custom is actually Kablams, is on the wrong account. Okay, fair enough. Welcome, Kablams. Uh, Kerim Harry uh, Hera Mimaroglu. That um, might be one of yours as well, Luke. He says, at Luke, bought my glycerin, going to make litres of flow improver. Oh, there you go. <laughs> is that for making bombs as well, though, glycerin? That's nitroglycerin. That's oh. something that I don't tell you. Right. No, it's uh, vegetable oil. <laughs> That's not what it is. We're going to get so many good tips tonight, aren't we? <laughs> I've already learned something. <laughs> We've got War Vision. Pain, <laughs> Frost and Fists, Marcus Hackmeister, Medic 6666. Am I supposed to downvote now or wait until later? You, you can probably downvote it now, Medic, to be fair. We normally get one within the first 30 seconds. I think it's been a bit delayed, so... Whenever you feel like it. Joe Scovel, um, Thor de Limited Caladai. Uh, Surreal saying, is Akaria here? Yes, he is. And Oracle of God saying, Luke, 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 oi, one more beer. Which I think you've just sorted anyway. So. Smaug's Wrath, another Not cool me. name. Awesome, right. So that's the rundown and the chat. Um, we have got some questions popping up already, but we're basically, the stuff we're going to go over this evening is Beers of War 3, so you can tell us all about that, Luke. I'm looking um, forward to that. We've got get comfy. a couple of questions. So anybody else who's got questions for Luke, or for me and Mike, but mainly for Luke, put them in the chat, and I will try and copy and paste it so that we can answer them. We'll get through them as much as possible. Welcome, Frank Storm. Thank you for joining. Um, um, we're also going to do some hobby tricks as well, because... Obviously, Luke's really good at that sort of stuff. Um, like I said, Sam, I quit down voting weeks ago. Cheers, Surreal. Thank you. <laughs> um, right. Let's start then with Beers of War then, Luke. So can you tell us a little bit about what Beers of War is? Yep. No worries. Do you like the David Brent pose? Shall I say it like this for most of Yeah, time? I think that's a pretty good pose. You can... The whole show. Oh, isn't it? <laughs> no, uh, Beers of War, what it is, is it's uh, it started off two events ago as a Kings of War tournament um, that me and my little brother put on, Ali. What it is, it's, it's, it's not like your normal tournament where you go and 1v1, you play, you go home. It's not that sort of thing. What I tried to do is in, incorporate a tournament that's good for new players, you know, anyone. All right. You don't need you don't even need an army to play because we'll supply a painted army for you. Um but what it is, it's on full tables done by myself, nice mats. There's none of this mismatch of terrain and all that. It's 
that's tried to be as pleasant as it can. Um, but if you win games, it's free beer. So anybody that wins the games gets free beer paid for by us. Um, but if you're new to it, what we do is we team you up with a veteran so you can learn the ropes quicker, you can learn how to play better and everything else. So it's trying to get us to turn it into a big social environment. I mean, there's even prizes for the people that drink the most so you can, <laughs> you can see how messy that gets, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so it, we're just trying to make events more social because when I first started going to wargaming events, what I found war is you go to a tournament, it's very eyes down, let's play bingo, do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, as that's what people came up. They came, they turned up, they played, they went home, and there were bits of socialising. It were never, it were a bit too serious for my liking. So I thought I'd change the edge of it, and offering huge price support yeah. wherever I can. So what beers of war? What we've done with beers of war three is because beers of war one and two they were good. We had a good turnout for both of them. Second one there was another. There was two events on the same day, and we still did all right. Um, but Beers of War 3, we're going on a different approach. Still going to be Kings of War doubles. We're going to call it the Catalina Wine Mixer. Because, you know, everybody knows about the Catalina Wine Mixer. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, so Beers of War 3, it's going to be Kings of War doubles as normal on the first day. So it's a two-day event. But playing alongside that, we're going to put 40K singles in. This venue that we're having, uh, we can have up to 22 tables, so we can get a lot of people in there. Mm -hmm. um, the rules still apply with the free beers. Um, armies for Kings of War, I, I can't be as lenient on if you've never played 40k, uh, but we can sort something out for people if they're new. Yeah. Okay. Day, day two is going to be Kings of War ranked, so singles. Okay, so the serious Kings of War players can come on day two. And playing alongside that is Doubles Age of Sigma. Right, so you've got literally all three, well, you've got 40k Sigma and Kings of War sorted over the two days. All, all in two days, all with free beers yep. if you win the game. Uh, food supplied, everything. Do you know what I mean? As in, um, there's going to be massive prize support from whoever we can get it from. Yeah. Um, we, we've, we've, we've obviously got the main ones like P Work and all them that we normally get. Uh, and it's about coming, having fun. There's going to be loads of spot prizes, loads of beer. Come and stay over, do what you want. But you don't have to come to both days. You can just come for one yeah. or you can get a discount if you come for them both. So it's entirely up to you. Where is it? Where is it located? It's, it's based in Wakefield. Uh, it's going to be at, uh, don't know the venue yet. It might be at the same place. We just need to okay uh, the second the, the date uh, we're trying to fix the date if they if we can't do it there we have got another venue but it's going to be in wakefield around the end of september okay that's fine and where, where can you actually book tickets is it on a website or is it facebook <laughs> the tickets will be through big cartel but the, like i said until we've got the venue finalized we can't mm -hmm. actually put the tickets on sale yet for beers of war three because beers of war two just finished on saturday yeah uh, so the next event will be ready in about a week or so's time. Okay, that's cool then. And uh, I, I'll, I'll promote it once we know what's definitely happening. Hundred percent. Yeah, that's fine. Um, we'll stick it up on our um, Wargame Online Facebook group as well for anybody who is interested as well. Because if, obviously, if it's been opened up to forty k and Sigma, there'll, there'll be more players than just the um, um, Kings of War. Kings of War guys. Yeah. yeah. Well, the thing is, like I say, it's about like I said, new players, old players. Like I said, with Kings of War as well, we even let people bring historical armies to take on fantasy armies, which doesn't happen at tournaments. Mm. It's quite a very fun event, but with us doing the ranked event the next day, you can have your fun game first day and get really drunk. And the second day, if you want to play a bit seriously with an hangover, you can do. Mm. So, we, we've never played yeah. Kings of War. I mean, in terms of the rules, from what I heard, it was uh, when 8th edition fantasy stopped, Kings of War got a new rule set which kind of replaced it, so you can still play the big ranked battles like similar to Eighth Edition Fantasy. So, is it very similar to that? Um, yes and no. Um, the reason I went on to Kings of War is because I tried learning Eighth, and because bearing in mind I'm new to the whole war gaming, you know, in general, as in I've only been gaming three years mm -hmm. uh, and modeling, so I'm, I'm new to everything. It's not something I've grown up with. Um, 
so when I uh, started trying to get into King, uh, sorry, Warhammer, I, I, I played Age of Sigma, Sigma first, um, and then I thought, oh, I want to try because I want. When I saw fantasy, I saw everything as mass battle. I didn't see it as like skirmishes. Yeah. So I tried learning eighth or slash ninth. The problem was, if you've never played eighth, that is a lot to take in. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, isn't it? We're a university course, as in, yeah. and with me, how I am, I'm pretty simple as it is. So <laughs> to actually delve into and, and like commit to something like that was far more than I was willing to put in. Um, and then I got pushed on to Kings of War because it was the same aspect. Um, but what it actually was is turn three, I learned the game. Um, it's very simple, but it's far more, it, it is, it's a simple game, but it's a complex game, if that makes sense. Uh, the core mechanics of it and everything else is very simple and very direct, but to actually master the game and become good at it, because it's all based around movement, becomes quite clever and quite hard. Um, so that's why I keep seeing the same few faces at the top, because they know everything. The mind works in this, like, uh, I don't know his name. What's his name? Guy that's good at maths on film. Rain Man? Rain Man, yeah. You've got to be like Rain Man <laughs> to play it. Well, Rachel, <laughs> Rachel keeps telling me she's like Rain Man. I ask her, like, I, I say, can you add this and this and this up? And she does it in a second and she just goes, Rain yeah. Man. <laughs> so, nice well, no, you, you've got to like determine what's going to happen and then obviously placing your miniatures in the right place at the right time. And then just literally it all comes together, like turn three is when it all starts coming together. Yeah. But I mean, I've never played a fantasy game where you can have all your units over in their side at table facing opposite way by turn <laughs> six, do you know? What I mean? <laughs> and it's over and done with an hour and a half, so it can keep your attention span. Whereas if a game starts going on two, three, four hours, I'm starting to go, I'm yeah. ready for a beer and a sit down. Do you know what I mean? I think we'll have so, to give it a yeah, go. That's- for definite me and mike played a lot of eighth edition and like you say it was it was over complicated um to, uh, you wouldn't have new players in the game age of sigmar is great now because you've got so many players and it's a lot yeah. simpler but i do miss the ranked um units and the the big armies that's the the main thing i miss about eight age of sigmar is it feels like a skirmish game obviously you can go as big as you want with it but it still yeah. feels very skirmishy as opposed to the ranked games that i i really enjoyed so yeah what i've got with sigma is get bigger you get more clunkier it gets because obviously you've got a lot more to deal with like while well, the piling in and everything but i mean mm. i haven't played it for months so yeah um, that's changed it's still i mean it's well worth age of sigma is one of my favorite games 40k is now up there on this in the past age of sigma was my favorite 40k was just below it now 40k and age of sigma are next to each other and yeah. they're, they're both so simple to play but they get complex the the more you play it as well so and we're still yeah. forgetting rules most of the games anyway um yeah. but i do want to play eight to... yeah yeah um eight eight and... i'll get phil and mike and maybe rachel and we'll, we'll try and as soon as Beers of War 3 is up, we'll see if we can come along. And if even if we don't take part in the tournament, I think we might just turn up and, and play a few games and see what it's all about, to be honest, because it does sound interesting. Yeah, let's say you don't need armies, don't need anything. We'll sort you all out with an army yeah. and we'll all sort you out with players to play. Um, okay. But you can learn it and play it and have a good day if you want to do that. That sounds awesome. We'll definitely do that. That's cool. Um, I'm quickly going to go through the chat because there's been a lot and then we'll go back to the... I think we'll talk about... Uh, was that everything from Beers of War? I can't. We've got the venue. More or less. Literally, if you, if you don't know what Beers of War is, I have got stuff on my channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, but literally, all it is, it's, it's, a, it's usually a day event with loads of prize support, free beer, and it's just about having fun. And you don't need armies to come and do it. You can just come down and have a play. That's it in a nutshell. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. Right, let's see where we're up to. Uh, we're talking about laundry. Surreal. Oh, no, it's a car. Yeah. Laundry. I don't know how. Dirty laundry. Um, Surreal is saying that your your pose is way too close to the unboxing video, which was your was that your dark <laughs> Imperium? Yes, the dark. Yeah, I had to do something different, didn't I? Do you know that was the best clickbait thumbnail of the month? I think, if not going on for the year. I think everybody there were a few clicked giggles. on that. Yeah, my little brother took the picture as well, and I wasn't wearing boxers. <laughs> um, because... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah good times um, 
mini warm up saying Luke's going magic mic on us. So that, we've got two magic mics on today then. We've got magic mic and Luke. Free beers says War Vision Gaming, so he's in for that. Carl Main saying free beer as well, so there's another one. Free beer is definitely a, a huge draw. Who don't like free this. beer? <laughs> uh, Surreal is saying we need to charter a plane and a hotel and have our own British inv invasion or invasion. I think he's saying yes. Yeah, yeah. We did. We, we're saying that with the beers of war two. A couple of guys said they're gonna fly over for beers three. Um, I mean, we do get people from even like Aberdeen and like Land's End down south, even that come up for the event. So people travel far and wide to come. Well, yeah. the yeah, the free beer and the free armies uh, to play with. It's it's always a good one. Because yeah. because it's it's obviously worth that free two pound fifty for a beer to travel all that way, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, Vaughan Killian saying we need more war gaming events in the USA. Oric Love God saying Kings of War rocks best rank and flank game. So that's another one who likes that. Excessive magnetizations just turned up. Welcome. Well, turned up about five minutes ago. I'm doing really bad on the chat today. Um, let's go through Brain Spider. Warhammer 8th edition was crap. Many jumped over to Kings of War instead. I, I wouldn't say it was crap. I would say it was very complicated. And if you didn't have three hours aside. You generally took too long to actually play. Yeah, well, every game we played of it, 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 especially with Rachel, it's bringing Rachel into it again. But every time we play with Rachel, you you needed a lot of time to play a game. Yeah, you put five hours aside or six to play against Rachel, and the rest. <laughs> I, I bought a I bought an Enigma code machine just to help me through rules, and it didn't work. So. <laughs> I like the simplified <laughs> rules now. You need like ten pages of rules is all you need to play a game system. It is. Look at Stratego. If you've not played Stratego, play Stratego. It's <laughs> yeah. the best one ever. <laughs> Got a few people talking about how small England is. It is definitely small compared to the uh, United States. Oric Love God is saying your country isn't as big as my state. No, it's <laughs> probably not. Tabletop War James has joined. A little bit late. No problem. Welcome, James. Um, Oh no, it skipped again. I hate it when it does this. Why would you skip? Right, you'll fill an email and then they'll probably just not reply to you. It's not worth sending the email, is it? It's not worth wasting my <laughs> typing. About my subtitles. Have you seen my, uh, you know, my watched, subtitles? Yeah. Me? <laughs> they're atrocious, and I've I've, got, I've, had, I've had a few complaints because I've got a couple of deaf viewers. Um, and yeah, they've, I've had complaints about it, so I've messaged them to say, "Look, you need sorting with and dealing with." And they've just they just sent me an email saying they're looking into it. That's it. Oh, see, I did watch. I know I watched one of your videos, and you said just watch my subtitles for a laugh. So I went back through some of the others just to watch them for a laugh, and they were brilliant. <laughs> just to, just to read the. I mean, that's another drawing point to your channel. Not not only do you get great tips on building stuff and the the cheapest way to make scenery and terrain, you also get amazing subtitles. So it's worth watching for that. Yeah. just be careful if you're young yeah. <laughs> um, Phil's in the chat so he's saying sorry I've not been around I'm out the hospital now but have to remain horizontal and on large dosages of painkillers and he's ordered a laptop That's holder to be. yeah so Phil was unwell at the weekend um, we posted that on the Facebook group just to let people know and um, apologised for the fact that Monday Musing wasn't on, but Phil needed rest. He still needs rest, and that's why he's not been on. He is... I mean, I went to see him in hospital, and the first thing he told me about was he's bought this laptop stand. So when he was getting rushed into hospital, he made the conscious effort to order a stand so that he could then edit from the hospital. <laughs> then I was like, Phil, what? why would you do this? And he's like, you know, we've got to edit. So he's still dedicated, even when he's needing as much medication as possible. <laughs> right, we have got a question. I think I missed one from earlier. Okay, you can answer this one. This is from Akaria. Back to that thumbnail. Tell us a little bit more about the idea behind the unboxing 40k Dark Imperium thumbnail. <laughs> right. Well, all it was, is I've got this thing about unboxings. Um, because whenever you watch an unbox, because obviously you get a bit excited about seeing something that you've never seen before. It's that excitement of what am I getting? What am I getting? Everybody releases the same unboxing video. It's like, oh, look at the box. You open the box and it's, oh, look, some more grey plastic that everybody's arm is going to look like for the next three years. And then, and then you like put it back in and then you go, well, that's it. It's just a review, isn't it? So I thought, 
Well, how, how am I going to make my video stand out? So I thought I'll lay naked on bed with a box at Dark Imperium. Done. <laughs> it did the job, though. <laughs> it did. It worked. <laughs> um, clickbait worked. <laughs> so from now on, are we going to see more um, naked thumbnails? It depends where it is. I think it was more to do with I've not done GW before, so I thought what I might do is I might just do this just to see see if it gets the wrong or right attention. It would just see, see it water. would see how uh, it was seeing how, how supportive people could be. That's the, that's the best way of putting <laughs> it. Um, okay, we've got Wee Green Stunt is saying would love a great tip on how to make a frosted or frozen rivers for my winter bowl action games. Do you have any quick tips for making frozen or f uh, frosted rivers? Yeah, white pigment, right? If you don't know what pig, you can buy white ink um, or white pigment. Don't use paint because the problem is with paint, it's too grainy. Uh, if you don't know what grains are, it's what they use as the paint pigment. And it, you can see bits when you mix it down in your resin. Um, get a resin. You can use the cheap pound shop stuff that I've shown you how to use in other videos. Um, but if you want a good resin, get like a, a polyester resin, um, which you can find from anywhere. You get like a litre for about a tenner uh, from a company called CFS is what I use. And literally all you're going to do is put like a drop of white ink um, in or pigment in that resin, give it a good mix up and pour it. And then you get like a really nice frosted effect. It's, it's really simple. It's just a matter about painting the base of your river like a nice, very, very dark blue, almost black. And then a bit lighter in the middle. Then when you pour that resin over the white, it really finishes it off. Awesome. That's, That's a good tip. Very simple, I, very easy. I watched your um, video on pouring the resin. I know it's something that sounds quite simple, but it is quite daunting at the same time. I've used different resins oh, yeah. in the past. If, and... if it goes wrong, it destroys everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's worth yeah. watching that. And I think that there was one, there was two at least that I watched, but one of them was like these little fountains. And you put them yeah. up on the on the windowsill to see if they would go yellow or something would go weird with them, and that was yeah. quite a good video for that as well. Yeah, what that was that was the review of the stuff you get the Tommy Walsh stuff from Pound Shop, the the glue. That was it, the, yeah. And the, the, comparing it to the CFS stuff, the problem is with the the Pound Shop stuff. The Pound Shop stuff is great if you want to do a couple of bases and everything else, but as soon as you want to start doing anything bigger. It's not worth it. It's too expensive. I know yeah. it sounds daft, but it's it's a bit thick as well. It takes some work working with it, and it dries that fast. If you make a mistake, it will set. Mm -hmm. Whereas the, the the polyester stuff, what that is, is it's natural casting resin. Um, you know, for like when they encapsulize flowers and stuff in like blocks of resin, um, that's what it's used for. So you've got plenty of working time. It flows very well. It's you can use it for casting your own miniatures even, as in mm. it's a professional product. Uh, and like I say, a tenner for a litre, I mean, you could do an ocean for that. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, it's, it's well worth checking out and use it. It does smell, it's polyester, um, so open a window when you're doing it. But apart from that, it's good stuff. Sweet. CFS then, I'll have a look at that one. Because I, I want to do, I've always been put off by water effects because of the attempts that went wrong. So I think I'll definitely buy a big tub of that and see how it goes. Yeah, best thing with, with, with resins is read the description of how to mix it. If you're using the CFS, you can use between 1% and 3% of the catalyst, which is the activator. Mm -hmm. uh, I always use 3%, so there's, there's room for error. Um, but all you've got to make sure you do correctly is mix, mix, mix. And I don't, I'm not saying that, thing, but just mix it. And if you're bored of mixing it, carry on mixing it. <laughs> so just make sure that that stuff is mixed. Because if there's a slight bit where the activator isn't in with the actual resin, it will remain tacky and it'll never set. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. That's the only thing you need to know. Um, right, let's keep going. The chat's just going and going and going. So we've got Big McDanskill saying, have you seen that old picture of the bed piano? That's what I'm imagining now, Phil. Okay, they're talking about that. Uh, a lot of people talking about back problems as well. Return to a soon mighty beard. There's a lot of love for Phil, as always. He's got a beard. Everybody loves him. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a good reason to love somebody. It's, I can't grow one, so nobody loves me. <laughs> I can't either. I keep saying I've got to hit puberty like the second time, but it's never happened. I just have to keep shaving until it starts to grow properly. Um, 
This is from Kerim Hayer, Harry, I can't pronounce your name, sorry, Mimmaroglu. Can you give a recipe for making airbrush cleaner? Yeah, I just use isopropanol straight out of the bottle. Um, isopropanol is just 100% alcohol. Um, but you can use it. Uh, I know uh, Mickey's Minis, um, he, he put me onto a product called Clean Spirit. You can get it like Wilco's and stuff. Uh, it's a natural mineral spirit. There's no... There's no odor. It's good for the environment and everything else. So if you're bothered about that sort of thing, it's a couple of quid for a, a big bottle. Uh, and that does a very good job, especially if you've got an ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, but because I do a lot of terrain, I've got tons of just pure alcohol. Uh, and I just use that. Uh, don't drink it, though, because it will kill you. <laughs> but, yeah, I just put that through my airbrush and it just strips it clean in instantly. Awesome. Um, um, but the best thing we ice is it's a, it's a quality product, as in you use it in making airbrush thinner. Uh, you can use it for, like I said, cleaning stuff. It's a great flow aid. You can add it to PVA glue to make your glue dry quicker. It's a very, it's like an essential tool. So if yeah. you've got it, you might, you might as well buy it and use it in everything because that's what it's there for. Buy it in bulk, as big a bulk as you can get it. Yeah. Yeah, because it's good for stripping miniatures as well because it's a neutral chemical. It's not corrosive. It doesn't dissolve anything. It's just neutral. It's the same stuff that you get in hospitals for, you know, alcohol wipes before you have an injection. Yeah. Um, it's the same stuff. It's neutral. It's not going to affect anything. Some resins, it might depend on what they are, but plastic, entirely fine. Just cake everything in isopropanol. It's, it's just awesome to have. Okay, awesome. We're having some issues with the microphone. Apparently, it's too loud, so I'm going to move it away from me. Like really far away, actually. Let's put it. Yours or mine? Mine, not yours. I don't think. I've got a new one, so I've been trying it out, but obviously not testing it too much because I needed to come online. Yeah, we'll see if that's any better. Let us know if it's good or not. I can't really do much else tonight. Anyway, let's keep going. So, um, mm -mm 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 -mm. big rich, welcome. Well, let me stop fixing my army to hear the chat. Sam's having flashbacks of Rachel Friday chats at Surreal. Uh, Surreal saying, did Sam get a haircut? I did get a haircut. Not a very good one. Well, actually... It looks really nice tonight. Hmm? It looks really nice, your haircut tonight. You've got a lovely ponytail. I mean, it, it's great. I need to... I don't put products in it because I don't care, but whatever. It'll do. Um, Coyote, hello everyone, welcome. John Codry, land mass and population are two different things though. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. Surreal says Luke needs a bloopers video. Uh, yeah, you need to get another, well, you need to get, we've got that, our third one out and I imagine you've got absolutely hundreds of hours of blooper content that you could make. Well, I, I normally leave really bad ones in, you know, just because <laughs> the, I, don't, I don't know whether you've seen the Frosty Ground cover video I did. Yeah, I, I I can't remember. If, you, if you've seen that video, I actually got to tell it, showing people how to fix on um, all the snow flock and everything I've put on. And I'm there going, yeah, yeah, just to attach it like this. And what I'm actually doing is spraying it with a black aerosol, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, which are just, yeah, stuff like that happens regularly because I work in a tip. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I do leave stuff like that in. But yeah, bloopers real would be quite funny. I might do that. Thanks for that. I might do it. <laughs> um, Brain Spider saying, from now on, I'm watching Luke's videos with the subs on. Uh, Sam yeah, there's a lot of all right after the harassing comments on Sunday. She's fine. She's um, absolutely fine. I know during the filming of the vids, some things have gone wrong. Uh, let's keep getting through the chat. There's still a lot. There's some good good comments as well, which I can't read them all out, but there's, there's some good ones. Are the naughty ones? Is that yeah, why I can't yeah, read yeah. them out? A couple of them are, yeah. Uh, Akari is saying, <laughs> could we have hashtag Magic Mike start doing clickbait thumbnails for WGO videos? You know what? <laughs> we, we've already got about four um, pictures of Mike, which we have. We, we I don't know if we can put on the internet. They're not. Of course like, you can. They're not naked. Have you seen? <laughs> I know. They're, they're quite good though. I I've kept them just because they're hilarious. And every time oh, I know. Yeah, okay. I was trying to think of what, what pictures are you thinking of? <laughs> I know. I know what you're on about now. 
<laughs> Premium <laughs> membership, that's what they're for. <laughs> that's a good idea. It's a good idea. I think we'll have yeah. to use some for, <laughs> for that. Um, so, oh, somebody else has just... Oh, it's done it again. I hate this chat. No, if, you, if you jumped again. It just jumps by itself. I say by itself. I, I scroll down and then it goes, it's Sir Mergleton. Hey, people, what's up? Welcome, Sir Mergleton. Oh, um, <coughs> Trust and fist, back problems. Keep going. It's weird having to convert everything to British. Home Depot, Depot Depot is B&Q. Walmart is Tesco. The grocery is Sainsbury's. <laughs> <laughs> and then Sir Ergleton says, imagine how I have to convert everything to French. <laughs> Definitely got it worse. <laughs> um, here's a beers of war challenge. Drink every time you lose a model. Well, you'd be sober. Because you don't lose models in Kings of War. What, they don't die? No, well, you lose the whole tray. So I suppose if you lost a tray, you'd have to lose like, you'd have to drink 40 drinks. So it's either going to be really good it, well, or really bad. Everything based as in you act, it's got nerve rather than health. And then you put wounds on something and then you roll uh, 2d6 to see whether you break that unit after you've had combat. So it's not like you remove, unless you had a drink per unit you lost. But some people have like, if you're goblin players, they're kind of up to nearly 20 units. <laughs> and, <laughs> and if they get absolutely tabled, I, I wouldn't be calling an ambulance for them. <laughs> And you've got to pay for their beer as well. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah, is expensive. Um, so Phil's... no, that's not happening. No, it's a good <laughs> idea, but not happening. Phil said, what is Luke's most expensive hobby product? The motorbike. Um, <laughs> um, most expensive hobby product that I use or don't use? Uh, um the most expensive one and then the most expensive one that you actually use well most expensive one is probably oh that's hard i've got to think now <laughs> um oh probably my band saw or my scroll saw um i mean that were what 80 quid um I use that regular for you know for cutting MDF bases out and stuff, um, but the like as in hobby product as in something I'd use on things. Probably most I've ever spent on something would be woodland scenics water effects, but that just sits on my unit and I never use it. Is that because it's too expensive to use? <laughs> so you just use the no, it's because it's terrible and it's expensive. It don't work either. It don't do what it's supposed to do. <laughs> I bought. I had two from Woodland Scenics, and one of them's got like a long nozzle on it that's supposed to be texturable, and that thing didn't work too well. Um, no, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. I think it's designed to work in Texas only. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I did. If you've not seen the video, I did the waterfall video and everything, and it took that. it nearly a week and a half to dry clear. Um, which in my when I need to bump stuff out to make it profitable, it really did slow me down. <laughs> um, whereas I just use gloss mediums now, which are like a quarter at cost. Yeah, which is a, so another tip. There you go. <laughs> um, but yeah, so probably the most expensive thing that's on my shelves that I don't use is Woodland Scenics products um, for water effects and stuff. But I use all the flocks and um, all that stuff because it's just. It's, it's so good because it's foam. It works really well. Um, the Woodland Scenic, well, the next, probably next expensive thing is the whole range of Woodland Scenics flocks. I've got every one. Mm -hmm. um, that cost me a good few hundred quid to buy every one. So, yeah, flocks. <laughs> Lots of flocks. <laughs> um, we've got a load of questions, most of them from Surreal and from Phil again. But um, the next one is what is the cheapest seal for war game boards? PVA. People, I did a video on that is called How to Suck Eggs. <laughs> um, it's showing people how, how to spray PVA glue because people, um, when you're wet working, as in you, when you're sealing flock, best thing to do is put your flock down on neat PVA. Um, don't buy the cheap kiddie stuff. Go to your hardware store, B&Q or Home Depot, whatever you want to call it, um, and get a trade quality sealer, which is PVA. And it's normally quite thick. It's quite gloopy. It's not like your kids play glue that's like water. 
um, the PVA is very dense. So if you if you paint that on like you would an emulsion, for example, chuck your flock on, and while that's still drying, get your watered down PVA glue, which is there's no ratio. You just water it down till it'll spray through the nozzle. All right, and then just literally cake it in that, and literally flock on my boards does not come off. You can't even scrape it off, and it's because you've got the, the thick PVA glue underneath, and the and the water literally drench it, as in drench the board, um, and it dries clear, you know, and everything's solid; it won't move. Um, the only problem that you face is if you're using stuff like Jarvis Scenics flocks because they're not colour fast and they bleed, mm -hmm. um, which it the bleeding can look all right, but if you've used like a lot of dark patches. You're going to end up with a really dark board. Um, whereas the woodland scenic stuff, it's colour fast, it doesn't bleed. So you can just soak it through and it sets hard. It's another reason why I use it because it's foam and it absorbs more water. Yeah. Okay. That's so good. PVA glue is the. Yeah. This is, I could talk for hours about that. Well, I was just to say, talking about the woodland scenics because I wouldn't know that, you know, I'd have just bought flock. And it would have gone wrong, but the yeah. fact that you've said that woodland scenics doesn't uh, bleed through—that's a good one. Yeah, it's a Jarvis scenics is it's a good flock because it, it's quite easy to get hold. Of. I mean, every train shop in the UK has it because it's a UK company. Um, but the problem is, it's, it's, it's sawdust; it's not foam. Uh, if foam flocks, I, I find personally far better than the sawdust stuff because they're just so absorbent. Hmm. Okay, awesome. So, yeah. Um, Another one from Surreal. What is your biggest or best or most expensive model? Let's do, you pick whichever one you want to do. Biggest, best or most expensive model? Uh, my biggest, well, I'll say my biggest model is my Bloodkeep miniature. It's my Azerat miniature um, from Bloodkeep. If you don't know where they are, check them out. They do some awesome centerpiece models. Um, and they're not over expensive either. I think it cost me about 60 quid. Hmm. Um, it's a big flame demon. It's about it's a good foot high nearly. Um, but most expensive models. <laughs> this is going to sound daft, but I bought I bought uh, a couple of um, you know the eighties dwarf slayers. Yeah. And I think I think the one that I bought it, it cost me nearly thirty quid for one. And I really wanted it because I've got a slayer army of three, and I really wanted that model, so I, I just thought. Chuff it and I bought it. Yeah. <laughs> Which one was it? Um, uh, it's the. I can't remember. It's the. It's the big. It's like the demon slate, you know, that game with the games day. Yeah. Model. They didn't actually sell it. It was just one that they gave away at an event. Okay. It's the one that stood on the great big dragon head. The, oh, the dragon head one. Yeah, I like that one. I've got the one, I think it was, was a sold one. It was on the top of a troll head or something. That was quite a cool yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. But, but my, was... my, biggest, my biggest and most expensive models are the Forge World busts. Um, you know, the, the really large 100 mil scale. Um, they're, yeah. like, they're like full models, but like upscaled to like 100 mil. Uh, I've paid stupid money for some of them, but just because I can't get all of them and I really wanted them. Hmm. Uh, I did about 150 quid for one of them, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's it. I'm not. I'm, I won't spend over 100 quid on a, a model that I play with. But yeah. if it's a display piece, then I'll and, and I'm gonna treat myself every now and again. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> Brain spider Link dressed as a schoolgirl with game boxes between his legs that's ultimate clickbait that's the Don't, next one we'll do it next video okay sorted <laughs> um what was your favorite commission or model that's from surreal again my favorite my favorite commission that i'm doing now is what i'm actually working on at the minute uh, i'm actually doing a monty python commission i've hey, got one in I've particular one one model um like black knight obviously yeah, awesome. <laughs> Only a flesh wound. <laughs> well, it's like three models. Yeah. Um, so he's brilliant. You need to do the rabbit. Is that there? I've got the rabbit as well, the the Trojan rabbit. Yeah. Yeah, rabbit of Troy, whatever they call it. Yeah, I've got that as well. Um, uh, he sent me everything. I'm, I'm slowly cleaning it all up, getting ready to paint, and I'm proper excited about it. <laughs> that's awesome. 
Um, we have, so Brain Spider saying, yeah, the cheapest sealant has to be watered down PVA glue in a squirty or spray bottle. So that's and it's the best. It's not that it's just the cheapest, it's the best. Yeah. Um, Steve Smallworld saying, is had Woodland Scenics still water? And that took over two weeks to clear again. Another, I, the one that we tried it on, Mike, remember the city board we did for the store? Yeah. And we had the drain pipe that was coming down with water pouring out of it. That was the idea. Water was supposed to be pouring out of it. Mm -hmm. And it ended up just yeah, kind well, of dripping. I'm well, just, just trying to think how much we put, because it was just going to be going all the way down to the floor, wasn't it, at one yeah. point? Don't you get up um, about three hours? Well, I'm just trying to think if we add, if we put the first bit on, let that set a bit, and then put more on it. I can't remember if we got that far with it. It wasn't the greatest, anyway. Uh, that's what put me off using that again. It was a shame. Yeah, it, well, it's, what that is, it's an, it's an acrylic resin, um, and it's already mixed with the activator in it. That's why it slowly goes off in the bottle uh, once you've opened it. Um, ah. But yeah, it, it's not the easiest stuff to work with, especially if you've never used it before. It's user-friendly, though. That's the thing. It is, all you've got to do is pour it out and leave it. But I get why it's a popular product, but it's not something I'd use. Mm -hmm. um, Big Rich saying, got a librarian with an axe and a plasma, and we'll try to convert it to a bike, asking for info on how I should do it. How you should convert a librarian onto a bike. What's the librarian? <laughs> Um, it's a casty dude. I, I mean, in terms of converting it, it depends on what sort of model it is. If it's easy to chop off at the waist and then replace the waist with the one that's normally on a bike that would be the easiest thing and then maybe do some green stuff robes to go around the back of it and have them flowing off the back of it that's probably your best bet um but i wouldn't know in, unless are they different scale the space marines on bikes to ones that are stood up no um the primaris marines are so if it's a primaris librarian yep. then i don't think there's any rules for one on a bike yet so i imagine it's just the normal space marine one Right. So it should just be a body switch and then green stuffing. And there's tons of tutorials all over the internet for green stuffing cloaks and capes and things. So it'd be worth checking those out. Mm -hmm. um, and plastic card's another good one. I use plastic card and that was a, um, Phil showed me how to do it. You get this like, it's, it's not the easiest thing to do, but you get like a flame of some sort. We've got these little, I don't even know what they're called, like Bunsen burner type things. And you just hold the plastic card over it and then bend it into shape. And then once it's cool, which is like almost instant, you can put it onto the model where you want it to go. So if you're not too um, confident with green stuff, you can use plastic card and, and melt it into shape instead. But you have to be really careful. Yeah. Wasn't that what you did on, on the Emperor model? Yeah, the Emperor model is gone now. I broke it. But um, yeah, the Emperor model <laughs> was a plastic card cape as well. But the problem is if you leave it on the flame too much, obviously it just almost sets on fire and melts and goes all nasty. So you've got to be really careful. That's the main thing. Um, Amazon had a sale on Elmer's glue yesterday, apparently. That's good. Um, is that wood glue? Uh, Elmer's glue. Elmer. So it's just, yeah, it could be wood glue. I thought it was just normal PVA. But it's not going to be the same level as the the builder's stuff, is it? I don't know. I think it's an American thing. I keep, I keep seeing this Elmer's glue, and I've never even seen it before. I don't know. I think it's wood glue. No. Um, Luke, any experience with pearlescent medium from Vallejo? No, nope, never used it. I think I've used pearlescent oh, medium awesome. before. <laughs> but I I've never used it. I don't know how to achieve it either. It's not something I've done yet, mate. So sorry about that. I've used other pearlescent medium, and it's just like mixing in a matte medium or something else, and it does just give it a pearlescent sheen to it. Like an oily finish almost. Yeah, so if you wanted to put a, a blue onto a green and make it a little bit shiny, a bit pearlescent, then that's all you yes. do. But it's like mixing any normal medium into it, so it's worth giving it a go and experimenting with it. I'll, I'll have a look. Uh, what I'll look at. Surreal's saying, I thought Luke made his own flock. You do make your own flock as well. I, I do. I, 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 that thing is, I, I did the video on making flock because I was making a lot of trees at the time. Um, and when I make trees, it's cheaper to make my own flock to put on the trees because you, you use a lot of flock making trees and it's not cost effective to buy it. Um, but as far as when I'm actually making my own boards and everything, the quality of the Woodland Scenic stuff, I can't achieve that at home. Um, whereas for trees, if you're using sawdust like I do when I make my own flocks, um, it's, it's 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 quite leafy. It's not it's not fully like a powder like the foam stuff. 
so it looks better on trees. Um, but the amount of flock I, I can go through in, in a week, uh, I'd have to put a day or two a week aside to make my own flock because I just eat flock. <laughs> in, um, so I'd have to... I can't make it in the quantities that I need it, so I have to buy it, um, mm -hmm. boards and stuff. But I do make my own flock when I'm making trees, just to make them far more, exp you know, far more cheaper. Yeah. Because uh, otherwise, spend, I'd, I'd, build, I'd build like forty trees, and I'd probably use thirty quid a flock store bought. So it's yeah, pointless. Make it <laughs> as inexpensive as possible. It's going to be better in the long run. Yeah. Um, what's the cheapest? This is from Frost and Fist. What's the cheapest? Uh, the best cheap material for making build buildings. Can't even speak tonight. Building, it depends what you're wanting, but I mean, I just use the, I mean, Stephen Small will put me onto it. Uh, it's the 10 millimeter and six millimeter underfloor uh, eating foam. You get a four foot by two foot sheet for about three quid off eBay delivered. Huh, that's good. Easy enough to cut as well with that thickness, I imagine. Yeah, you just stand the blade straight through. If you haven't got a foam cutter, you can just use a stand the blade. If you want to finish it off, you can just warm your stand the blade up a bit so it, it gets rid of the bobbliness. Okay, awesome. That's a uh, but it's a, proper, it's a proper foam, as in it, it doesn't, it's not like a bobble foam, as in, you know, like full of air bubbles. It's a proper solid foam. Uh, it's just the same as blue foam. It's a good so car. When you're area. priming it, it doesn't melt. It's, it, I would say the blue stuff is resilient. I wouldn't say it's completely. You know, I wouldn't say it's completely going to save a can. You might get some dimpling on the underfloor stuff, mm -hmm. um, but you can do if you want in a rough effect. But if you're wanting to keep it as it is, I wouldn't spray it. I would paint it on still or airbrush it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's it's resilient, I'd say. It's not 100% proof. Could you just PVA? Could you seal it with PVA or something and then spray you it? Seal it with PVA or cork or filler, whatever you're going to be putting over up yeah. to texture it. Would probably do it fine, yeah. Okay, awesome. It's not so I've done, but again, try it at your own peril. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't blame you for it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> does Luke, this is from Ralph Hummel, does Luke use craft paint on minis? I sometimes even use emulsions, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, the emulsions that I do use are an acrylic based emulsion. Um, yeah, I, I use whatever I've got, and like I say, it's People have got like people can get quite snobby about what paints they use and why. Um, whereas I just learn to use what I've got. And if somebody wants a certain color and I don't have it in a, a paint, I'm like, oh well, I've got it in an emulsion and I'll make it work. Hmm. Um, and it, once your mini's lacquered and finished, anyway, it's not gonna. Chip. But then it's because I, I know how to use the product. Yeah, I think we, we, I was watching one video from Tabletop Minions, and he was talking to all of the like the pro painters or the award-winning painters and asking them questions about brushes and paints and that sort of stuff. And it was interesting, the answers, because some of them swore by needing a certain paintbrush or buying good quality brushes. Others said, yeah, yeah. I just buy 50p brushes or 50 cent brushes and they're absolutely fine. I know James yeah. James Wappel or Wappel, he paints to an insane standard and he uses brushes that he doesn't even clean. He just paints and then throws them away when he can't use them anymore. Yeah. Well, so, this, I mean, I learned this from, I mean, a little bit off topic, but my dad's a fine artist for a living. He does a lot of restoration in like manor houses and things. Hmm. Um, bearing in mind, he'll go painting in and some of his uh, brushes that he've got are about 80, 90 quid each, some of these brushes. But when he's doing most of his work and his day-to-day -day work, he buys a set of brushes for like a tenner, he uses them and he throws them away. Hmm. Um, and I do that with a lot of my miniature painting, as in I buy a set of car brushes that might last a couple of days and then just throw them away um, because it's easier than looking after expensive brushes. Hmm. When you say you throw them away, do you not repurpose them for scenery later on down the line? I do, but I'd have that many. It'd be pointless. <laughs> you just have a paint <laughs> sometimes, Yeah, sometimes I cut them off and use them as reeds and stuff, <laughs> you know, or I'll keep the wooden stalk to stick in some or stay some paint or something. But, yeah, yeah. It's quite um, wasteful, but it gets to that point when you when you're doing so much. It, it cost me a fortune in Windsor and Newtons, but it might, I'd go through them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes cheapest is better. It's what use whatever you can work with, really, isn't it? Yeah, whatever works. Because in this, yeah. this is the argument I've had with a lot of people. It's like there's a lot of people out there saying you need this, you need that. You don't. You need what works. That's yeah. what you need. Um, Kablams is saying Jarvis water effects. He's got that, and it's pretty bad. 
Um, they're all the same, mate. They're all bottled in the same place. Uh, they're, they're all an acrylic resin, and a lot of them come from the same factories when you actually research the product. Okay. Um, Rebranded. So real saying both of you need to do army showcase videos for the different game systems. So I know we haven't got many showcases on Wargame Online yet. We, we're we trying to get the armies painted so that we can do showcases and get time to actually f film them all. But what about you, Luke? How many showcases have you got to still do if you're going to do them at all? I, I was, with the amount of miniatures that I'm getting in at minute as commissions, I've thought about doing uh, you know, like commission showcases. Mm -hmm. I might start doing that. I've, I've only just, my only commit, the only showcase I've done was the other day when I did the Prime Iris Marines. That's the first one I've ever done because um, I'd finished them I thought I'd show people um, but I, I might start doing it because I've nearly finished all my Cromley Corks I've nearly uh, finished that army um, so I might do that and I've, I've just got a, a shipment the other day from Cromley they've sent me the new squats um, which they've brought out, which I'll be doing some videos on them as well shall be high demand for those as well I did. I mean we've had um, Sean on a couple of times we're going to get him on more often as well obviously he's the does a lot of commission painting over in america but his youtube channel has a lot of the the showcase videos as well so that cool. I, I find they're interesting to look at even if it's not a system i'm interested in i sometimes just have a look to just just to look at the color scheme so i definitely nice be interested in doing it is in that yeah. Yeah, it'd be good. good if we could see you. Get, get some up for your own so that I can uh, just spend the morning looking through some showcases of armies that you've been working on. Yeah. And then you can do. tell me that it cost you like three pounds to paint an entire army because of the products you used or something. <laughs> well, so technically, it doesn't cost me out because I've got uh, army paint sponsorship. <laughs> on. Just throw their paints all over them. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, Phil's talking about the Facebook group, saying that you can post the yeah, post the pictures up on there. Uh, not 100% sure, but I think Luke is a Vallejo man. I think you've just answered that. Are you an army painter man, or do you prefer Vallejo? I'm army painter because they, they give me the stuff and pay me like, but um, in all honesty, I use what I've got, mm -hmm. right? Um, but if I was spending my own money on paints, I would buy army painter because they're the cheapest. <laughs> because I'm a tight, tight git. <laughs> but um, the Vallejo paints that I have got, I do have quite a, a selection of Vallejo. It's because I got a lot of them given, um, but they are very nice. But they're all the same to me. They all work. They all work. Some of them work very similar. Some work slightly different. But paints, paint. I'm not bothered. Yeah. Um, it'd be what literally whatever I could get my hands on the cheapest. Okay. Awesome stuff. Oh, uh, Simon is joined as well. Welcome, Simony. Saying he's got the package today, Sam. So I got some little claws made up for my black dragons. I uh, um, converted these blades and then got them cast up by Mark at Wordforge Games. If anybody wants to do any casting of their own miniatures as well and doesn't want to do it themselves and wants somebody to do it for them, um, contact Mark at Wordforge Games on Facebook or his website because uh, I think it was it's like a 12 centimeter mold that you can um, basically fill and you send him all the little bits and that will cost 30 pounds for that mold and then one pound 50 every time you want it casting so doing it yourself is obviously going to be cheaper but if you want it done um without worrying about it and repeatedly at, at a high quality then mark's got that's an good. awesome you'll be able to do it for that if you if you work out how long that's going to take you mm -hmm. to cost i mean how much do you value your time do you know what i mean i mean if it, 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 it took me more than two hours to make a, a mold up of some I'd made, mm -hmm. so I might as well send it to him for 30 quid. Mm -hmm. Absolutely bargain. I mean, he's cast up yeah. about 17, he's done about 17, 16 runs of the stuff. And Simon, he said, he messaged me asking if I had any bits for the Black Dragons rather than buying them for like 60 or whatever shoulder pads that they were doing at Shapeways. And I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll just send you a couple of bits. So I've sent him three of three pairs of blades and some shoulder pad stuff so if he gets his models out converted before i do my black dragons i'm gonna be i need a kick up my backside basically to get my conversions done before he whacks them up on the internet but i'm glad you received it simony if um, somebody wants to make a model of me <laughs> i'd send it to him to be done i'd quite happily pay for that yeah he'll probably do one for you <laughs> that'd be awesome that, that'd be a beers of war prize that one it take look home with you yeah, I mean, Mark is 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 the man with the skills. He's already had Phil. We've had the Phil Ogre. 
which was awesome to paint. And I've got a, I've got about six tutorials coming out for painting all different things. So I had to paint the red cloth, the black armor, because that was quite nice, the white mm -hmm. vests and that sort of stuff. So yeah, if you want models done, speak to Mark at Word Forge Games and it's worth we'll it. We'll do Link them after this. Yeah. <laughs> Um, right, what else have we got? Big Richard saying thanks. Uh, Akaria Primaris on a regular Space Marine bike. It would look like he's riding a Grom. What's a Grom? <laughs> on the Grom yeah. Is that a type of it's bike? A, it's a small, the 120cc, very small bike. They're quite, they've got quite a big following because uh, they're so small. Uh, people spend stupid money on them, like putting 500cc engines in them and stuff. <laughs> but they're hilarious. Check them out. They're funny. I'm learning so much tonight. They're nice to ride them. Um, Kilroy V2, hey guys, anyone here try war colours paints? I've never tried them, have you, Luke? I've not tried them. Uh, I have looked into buying them though, because they're, they're a good price. Uh, I know Mickey at Mickey's Mini, Minis uses them more or less exclusively, so they're great for airbrushing as well. Hmm. Uh, but what's good about them is if you have a colour or a wash that you like using most, it'll send you it in a bigger bottle. That's um, awesome. Yeah, this is what I've heard of. As in, it sounds like an awesome company. Um, so it is something I have looked into doing. I know the ink range, the, all the inks that they've got, I was tempted to pick those up just because of the yeah. high pigment. That's in them. Yeah, oh, I need to look at those as well. Yeah. Um, right, let's try and get through this chat because we're coming up to an hour now, I think. So we'll go through this chat. We'll see if there's anything else. And then we might try and finish on time this this week. <laughs> Uh, so Elmer's glue is, this is how far behind we are, Elmer's glue is PVA or wood glue and it's the elementary school grade stuff, so that's that answer. Yeah. Um, apparently Forge World is back in stock of Thalax gold paint, so if anybody's a fan, I know Phil is, head on over to the Forge World website and buy that. Or get it colour matched, <laughs> get it get it done in emulsion <laughs> paint instead. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they do uh, metallics in the VHU in the motion. Oh, yeah, you'll have to do a Luke's That'd APS. Awful. Go and chat to them and get them to yeah. create it. Um, Mr. Cragham Gaming. I'm not going to say, everyone says McCragham. I know Phil and Rachel both call him McCragham Gaming, but Mr. Cragham Gaming, welcome, Craig. Uh, Brain Spider, I buy brushes, and when they lose the tip, they become dry brush or stippling brushes, and they get thrown away when they get too bad for that purpose, too. That's true. Surreal says, you know Luke's dying to talk about his bike, and Akaria has said, I have a 125cc bike on CBT. What's I don't know what CBT is. It's certified basic training. Okay, there we go, it, learning again. What, and he says, what, what, what is, his question is, what bike should I get next that will make me a hit with the ladies so that I don't have to work on my looks or personality? <laughs> Just, just, just Google F dot B Mondial. That's all you need to know. Okay, that's a quick answer. Um, yeah. Five mil foam core is great for quick forty k ruined buildings. That's from Steve Small World. Another tip. Yep, that's the stuff I run about. That the, the foam core stuff that works well. Uh, but the, the underfloor insulation and foam core is similar stuff. Uh, Mr. Cragham Gaming saying he likes your tutorials, he's always enjoyed them and he used your technique for the Poundland resin for water. So we've talked about that already, but that's good to know that somebody else has used it. Yep. Bitterness. Hello everyone, I've finally made it to a stream. Welcome, Bitterness. And thank you for joining. Akaria, sound... And we're going... Sorry? <laughs> and we're going in a minute. Yeah, we're going in. Well, this was probably like <laughs> 10 minutes ago, so... Yeah, yeah. Um, this is from Akaria. Sam would mark at Wordforge Games do a life-size cast like a bust of Magic Mike's beautiful hands. And he probably, he probably would. Um, if anybody wants a life-size cast of Mike's hands, send us a message. Send, send Phil a message on the website, and we'll see what Mark can do. And you know, we were talking about the premium, the next level of premium membership for people who wanted to pay extra to, to Wargame Online, and that could be a giveaway. <laughs> Mike's hand. My hands. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say hand, but you can have both, I suppose. Right, let's see what else there is. Any more questions? Luke, what type of, uh, what bike do you ride? That's from Adrian Trevor. It's a FB Mondial. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so it definitely works. You're speaking from experience. Yep. It's a beautiful um, bike. Even though it's only a small bike, it's beautiful. Kilroy is saying about so the Army Painter range. So Craig said, I love Army Painter paint i have the mega set and it was a bargain which has lasted me for years now and kilroy said 
the thing is, in my opinion, the Army Painter range is really small compared. I mean, their layering range alone is massive comparatively, not to mention their other paints. I think they are expanding. At the end of this year, they've got a bigger paint set coming out, I think, for Christmas, if not before. Yeah, yeah they have. They've got quite a lot happening. I mean, they're doing, like, um, effects paints and all sorts, um, mm. as in the, you know, they're really pushing and expanding where they need to. Uh, but, yeah, the, the, the base colours and the, the layers... It's the base colours that I think they're a bit lacking mm. uh, for me. I'm saying is it because they've got it's like for example the the blues and the greens are like you've got like twenty colours and then you get to yellow and there's three and you're like what? <laughs> they, they probably gave up when there's one. <laughs> they went yeah yeah. No, it'd, be not it'd, be nice, it'd be nicer if they're like a brownier yellow. Um, some some of the colours that you pick up and you go. Oh, they're very bright. Well, I want a dull colour and I've got a dull colour in that. So, yeah. I mean, I don't mix paints. I can't be bothered because I've got to be consistent. So I just could grab some Vallejos or some Citadels or whatever and just work with what I've got. Like I said, work with what you've got. What you've got. Yeah. Um, Brain Spider's talking to Phil about... So he says, I'm the zombie in the Riot gear, Glen Booster, out sometime this summer. So that's the Walking Dead game from um, Mantic Games and that's out in August. Mm -hmm. So he says, I'll get a copy and paint it up for you guys. That's to Phil. So that's cool. So, um, yeah, he's got his own model of himself in zombie form, which is awesome. That's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> McCraggan, thinking of my Scottish cousin. So it's a real don't get your hopes up, Sam. Mike would solo host the show before Rachel would let you have a bike. <laughs> well, to be fair, Rachel wants a bike, and I've told her she can't have one because she can't ride a push bike, let alone one with an engine. So... Yeah, One wind engine is like a gyro effect, though. You don't you don't need to balance a motorbike. <laughs> the problem is she'd be a danger to herself and everybody else around her, so it's it's not worth it. Fine. <laughs> um, Brain Spider wants Mike's actual hands, not a casting of them. And, and that's Phil's, really yeah, Phil okay. said though, PM me after everything has a price, so that's even creepier. Watch yourself, Mike. I think I might have to now. You're gonna wake up with tourniquet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, Loki LP, thank you for subscribing. I do love these little pop-ups that happen on screen. I think it's like uh, it, it's technology at its finest for me. I know it's something tiny, but it just pops up and it makes me happy. Right. Um, <laughs> what product would you use in an ultrasonic for stripping or airbrush cleaning? That's from Thor de Linda Calidai. Same that as before, just after the open off. Yeah, stock up on your ISO. Yeah. Surreal. I think film. I, I, I get five. I think I get five liters for about nine quid, um, which where, lasts me a long time. Where did you get yours from? Uh, eBay. Um, oh, sorry, no, five liters is nineteen quid. A liter is nine quid, um, and you just buy it in a big, literally five liter tub, and that'll last me a good few months. Awesome. Um, Surreal saying Phil would shave his beard and wear a dress before Rachel would let you have a bike. I think he'd wear the dress anyway, um, but shaving his beard, yeah, potentially that will happen before. Beards are what? Let's all wear dresses. You could do um, the best dressed. So you turn up best and you the fanciest dress, gets another beer. <laughs> yeah, done. Sort of. Uh, we march for McCragger. <laughs> That's <laughs> uh, Brain spider saying house 20 quid for the hands. Okay, it's getting dark now. And Phil saying plus postage. Let's carry on. Akai is saying Luke, would Mantic support or sponsor Beers of War 3? Could we play Walking Dead and Dead Zone, etc.? Uh, that could be that could be chatted about. I mean, Mantic have support that have supported all the events so far, um, giving us vouchers and bits um and bats anyway. Um and we actually had a couple of uh, Mantic's employees at the Beers of War 2. Um, so it could all be talked about for Beers 4, maybe. Awesome. Surreal's asking if you were ever going to start doing live shows. People keep asking this, but bro, I've, I've got a kid. <laughs> um, and through the day now, when I used to do all this sort of stuff, um, I'm obviously looking after my child now. So on an evening, I'm knocking out commissions and in between drying times, I'm trying to um do the videos to keep up with the channel mm -hmm. uh, so doing live shows unless you want to sit and watch me paint thousands and thousands of whatever i'm painting then i could do if that interests people but 
it might break me off from what I'm doing and slow me down, which I don't want for my customers as well. So I could do it, but the content won't be great um, until she starts going to school. Yeah. When she, when, she goes, when she goes to school, I've thought about doing, you know, full live board builds. And uh, I know I mean, I'm talking with a lot of quite big companies that want tables for salute and stuff. Um, so, I mean, that's something I can do, the live footage of me actually doing whole days, showing you how, how it works, working in a full day, building tables and stuff, which I could do. It's all to come anyway. That's awesome. Um, Luke, where did you get the nail, this is from Kilroy again, where did you get the nail polish shaker that you showed in the Army Painter vid? eBay. Everything's from eBay. <laughs> uh, Surreal is saying, why did Brits love drag so much? I, to be honest, I've never worn a dress, Surreal, so some people would probably like drag some people don't i think it's down to the individual but there's probably a lot more brits that do it i suppose it's 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 airy wearing a dress it's nice kilts are the same though although it's it's not allowed them unless you're no, scottish it's not the same the heavy and the thick it's not like wearing a cheap polyester girls dress <laughs> it's just speaking from experience <laughs> again <laughs> <laughs> experience. You know when you get home, is that the first thing you put on? You're just like, right, get the dress. <laughs> get the dress on. On the wall. Um <laughs> Kiblam saying camp and eccentric, it is in our genes. It's fair enough. And Phil saying Dame Edma was Australian, because <laughs> that was one of the one of the examples. So two out of three Dame. surreal. Um oh. Thor uh, Delinda Caladai was asking as well if it Isopropanol is rubbing alcohol, and Phil's answered that. Yep. Uh, Surreal saying, kids help with live shows. People see you're human and donate more. There you go. Mm -hmm. That is true. I just um, don't want my child crawling around, picking up knives and drinking yeah. alcohol. And... Yeah, you don't want that. <laughs> well, you don't want it on camera anyway. <laughs> you, just don't want, no. you don't want proof <laughs> on the internet. Bringing uh, aerosols in house, which I don't do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Brain spider <laughs> saying wearing dresses, be careful what you wish for. I'm sure Sam's seen the pictures on my Facebook. Haha. <laughs> I haven't seen that, but so you want Mike's hand and you wear dresses as well. That's I think you and Luke like get on fire. Dragon. You and Luke will get on fine. You need to turn up for beers of war three, Brain Spider. Uh, until about a century ago in the UK, many boys were raised as girls until they were about five. It's not well known, but look it up. Wow, I didn't know that. I definitely wasn't brought up as a girl. Uh, Mike, were you? Um, not as far as I can remember, no. Not until five, anyway. It was probably only till, till you were about three, and then they, and they realised, mm. I imagine. I would never brought up as a girl. I mean, I had Barbie dolls and everything, and yeah. I mean, I'm fine. <laughs> you only get into the dress when you're inside <laughs> that's not that bad <laughs> right let me check my piece of paper to see if there was anything else I think we're sorted so games oh we'll quickly do this one games you play and the reasons for playing them well obviously one's Kings of War um, obviously it's just because it's digestible it's easy if you're not if you have not been brought up with war game and you're new to it there's not a lot to remember and the fact that it's quite self-explanatory the other thing about Kings of War that I like it is because all the armies are roughly the very similar. So it's not like when you look at another army and say War Armor Eighth Edition, and it's the, the rules for that army are completely opposite to anything else. Uh, with this, the rules are very similar, as in like the speeds are roughly the same, the the special attacks are roughly the same. That you know, it's it's very similar what you do. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, it's, it's very easy to digest not just your own hand but everything you get me mm -hmm. um that's why i like kings of war because it's just self-explanatory if you've never played an arm before you more or less know what it is um other games that i play i've just started playing warpath um that's a little bit more complicated than uh kings of war it's quite different for me um but again it's quite digestible. But my favourite, favourite war game, and people laugh at me when I tell them, it's Stratego. And if you don't know what Stratego is, it's a very old MB game. And it's just, it's like playing Guess Who, but it's a war game like mm. Guess Who. 
<laughs> but it's just played it's that so years fun. Ago. Such a great game. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the, I mean, mo- I mean, I, I have bought eighth, and I've had a quick flick through the rules, and yes, eighth does look a lot more simpler, um, which I will be. I will be having a go at uh, Monday, I believe, unless where our last has taken me for my birthday is for longer than I think it's going to be. So I don't know where I'm going. I might be dead tomorrow, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's so dark. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't like Warpath, it. Warpath, go back to the other one. Warpath is the sci-fi version from Mantic as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's 40k from Mantic. Hmm. Okay, awesome. Um, it's... Um, we saw them at Salute, actually, the little dwarves that were there. Oh, I can't oh yeah, the Forge Fathers. Yeah, they're, they're yeah, awesome. Yeah, Forge Fathers. They're, they're lovely. Bugger to put together, but they're lovely. <laughs> um, we've got... So, Frost and Fist said, hmm, I just noticed no donation link in the, this week. I've just refreshed it, and it's there. I don't know why it wasn't there initially. That's probably... I mean, it's an extra thing we put on, to be fair, but it should be there. I've just refreshed. Maybe it didn't go on till we were live or something. I don't know. It should be in the description anyway, if it's um, if it's working. So what else was there? I've never sprayed aerosol in... Oh, no. <laughs> Another one from Surreal. Um, we'll go for the last few questions. So we've got Brains, uh, one from Akaria. Luke, where would be the best... Where would be best to keep informed on Beers of War 3 and future events? Uh, I've got a group uh, called Beers of War. <laughs> Funnily enough, uh, if you do, there's about sixty members in there now. If you just like that, uh, well, join that group. We'll I'll add you, uh, and literally we'll put everything in there. We also put things on the Kings of War Fanatics page, but obviously you've got to be active regular to see that. Uh, so you're probably best off with uh, either my group, uh, Luke's APS Hangouts and Discussions. Or the Beers of War group itself. Don't get Gears of War, uh, Beers of War mixed up with the Gears of War group. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but there's a Beers of War. You'll see the nice artwork. Okay, awesome. Um, and then we've got Sean Dewitt saying he can make me get in dress. Fair enough, Sean. That's a statement and a half. Sam probably forgot. That's the link. It, I, I don't know. Somebody will have to tell me if the link's there or not. Um, Surreal says, ask Luke about Patreon. Don't, doesn't he do it? Don't you do it? No. Okay. That's fair enough. Big Rich. <laughs> <laughs> Big Rich. I can't. Well, I did a video a long time ago about why, I'm, why I won't do Patreon. Um, the reason is, is I just like everybody to get what I do. Um, I don't want to isolate it from people that don't want to spend or can't afford it. As in, I offer my entire services to everyone mm-hmm. and the ones that want to donate can just send me some money via paypal mm-hmm. um what else have we got hey phil just made a facebook account we'll join the group soon that's another person made a facebook account to join the group that's awesome welcome big rich and <laughs> Okay, we'll close this one. So, Akari is saying, what is the best chat-up line to use while riding an FB, Mon- what was it, a Mondial, Mondial, 250 Mondial, hipster? Mondial, yeah. Best, best chat-up line, say something really quick and short because they're going to miss you when you go flying by. <laughs> um, <laughs> best thing to do, mate, is do what normal people do and go on grinder. <laughs> <laughs> Tinder, even. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Brain Spider attempted to do a Patreon. No rewards. I just want to he- I want people to help support my addiction and hobby. <laughs> that's fair enough, Brain Spider. It's one way to do it. Okay, I think that's everything. We we did loads and loads of questions there. Thank you very much for answering all of those, Luke. Mm-hmm. Um, no worries. I'm not sponsored by Grinder or Tinder, by the way. <laughs> Free advertisement. We have got one more. I say we've got one more. This is from M. Mo. So this is from the Facebook group who says, "Ask Luke about his one-man crusade for Ford World Resin quality." And I've seen, I've seen your, one of your <laughs> videos was, on this. Yeah, it, it it wasn't aimed at Ford. I just use Ford World as an example, and people have gone mental. Yeah. Um, what it was is, I'm sick of getting kits that don't fit. And but what it is, it's not that companies say, you know, we're sending it in resin because it's better for detail. I mean, GW say that, but 
what it is is we all understand why people use resin it's because it's cheap and the molds are cheap to make if you're going to make something out of plastic which is far better for it to go together to make a plastic mold to withstand the heat and everything else costs an absolute fortune um it, it's more it's nice when companies are honest do you know what i mean as in when they say yeah it don't go together but this is why it's a tenor do you yeah. know what i mean um but it's when somebody sends you something that's supposed to be a premium product and then you get it and you go it looks terrible and then you've got to spend time cleaning it and putting it together what's what's wrong with buying a kit sticking it together and painting it that's mm -hmm. that was my argument uh, as in it's like you wouldn't buy like a hoover and then it, you have to shave bits off before sticking it in for it to work properly <laughs> you know what i mean it's, in, <laughs> it's it's just that I mean, modelers of a whole. It's, it's, it's a model, isn't it? You've got you've got to clean it up. You've got it, but you shouldn't. It's a it's a product that's supposed to work as it's sold. Yeah. Um, and I, I, what it was, I'd had a bad, I'd had a bad run in with not just model companies, as in washing machine suppliers and all sorts. In that week, where nothing worked, and I was getting nowhere with people, <laughs> so I just locked me around. <laughs> I got a little um, bit annoyed. So yeah, that. My, um, well, not my army, Rachel's custodian army, we bought two four-drawers Contempt Dreadnoughts, and both of them, mm -hmm. one of them had the little check thing in it saying it had been checked by somebody. The other one was in a blister pack, so it didn't. But both of them had that massive, you know, the, when you get them and they've got that line all the way around the kit, and it's yeah, like yeah. you have to, sh and it's all misaligned. So on both of these Contemptors, I've had to do my best to carve off all of those lines and make it blend as smoothly as possible. They're not great, but it's been too long for me to, like, I think it's been a month or something and they've already been built. Yeah, and I've... It's mate, as an end of the day, if it's not right, it's not right. Yeah. As in, I watched the, the, the video where Duncan showing you how to work with it. And he goes, oh, see this line here? That, that's where the mold slipped. Now <laughs> yeah. that's wrong. That, do you know what I mean? As in that, the mold slips, so they're sending you something that's not right they're sending you something that you should correct. Now that, that I get flash and I get mold lines because you even get them on your plastic kits, which, which are superior. Um, but to have something that the nose defective and they're still sending you it, that's when it's wrong. Yeah. Um, but it should at least send you something with minimum work required. No, that's fair but enough. You pay a lot of money for it. it. I, I, each other. I much prefer to get the um, plastic kits. Like if, if there's a choice between plastic or four drilled, I'd prefer just to get plastic because I know there's going to be no issues or it's just going to be a mold line. The misalignment yeah. thing is the biggest issue I've got with some things that are bent like swords and weapons. It's annoying, but you can heat them back up again. It's not too much of an issue, but for the, yeah. the slipping, yeah. it's just, it's so annoying. And I probably should have looked at them better when I bought them because they would have replaced them. The, the good thing with four drilled is they have awesome customer service. They will replace them, but like you say, it's annoying when they get sent out and when they've been checked by somebody and they're yeah. still sent out wrong, it's like, well, that hasn't been checked. But Yeah, so somebody obviously drinks a lot of alcohol that works in quality control. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. Uh, last in the chat, we've got... Uh, oh, Mifas has donated. So there is a thing there, unless he's found a way to our PayPal without... A, a link thank you very much mythos keep up the awesome and stay frosty my friends and that's from wolf brother mythos um what's in the chat tempted still oh, that's the last bit everyone's laughing at your grinder statement um <laughs> surreal said he giggled until he peed a little <laughs> um surreal saying don't forget to donate people film morts need something to live for <laughs> that's a bit harsh <laughs> And Phil saying, thanks, guys. Trying to take it easy. Don't want to end up, end up back in hospital. No, nobody wants you to end up back in hospital, Phil. We all want you to, to be all good and healthy. Uh, Surreal, it was then that I wondered if the model... I've got to read these beforehand because I know what Surreal's like. If the models came out of the mould pink, would guys still buy them? Yeah. I don't know if that's some sort of... I don't know. This <laughs> is surreal. It could be anything. Um, I get annoyed when things don't fit like they're supposed to. That's from Akaya. And Kablams hates the four-drawed misalignment issue. So, yeah, there's quite a lot that don't. I mean, like you say, you pay a premium price for a premium it, product. It, it's not just them. It's most resin companies. So it's mm. obviously a problem in, in production and casting. Um, it's, it's just that 
if that's the case, why don't they make it out of a different resin or don't even use resin at all as in use something else that works? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I as in, that. yeah, as it, just just work with something till you get something that works. As in, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it could, it's one of them conversations that go round and round in circles for hours and hours and hours because nobody's got a proper answer. So, okay, um, that's awesome. Then, so we'll, we'll call it there. We'll have no more questions. It has been longer than an hour. We tried to keep it on on track for an hour, and we failed as always. But um, yep. did our best. Thank you, everybody who has turned up for this chat and everybody who's watching this back. I hope there's been a lot of answers to questions that you might have wanted uh, answering. Thank you um, to Mythos for donating as well, because that's that's awesome and it keeps us doing what we're doing. And well thank you to Mike for turning up. He's been really quiet tonight, and I'm sorry, Mike, because right. I, I talk for both of us sometimes, and I should shut up and you should ask some questions. But no, it's fine. It means I, it means I can relax. Well, when did you show up, Michael? <laughs> He's not even listening. He's not even there, is he? <laughs> He's been so out for most of this chat. Um, and massive thanks to you, Luke, for, for, for joining us. Man. It's been awesome. And for everybody, well, no, nobody's going to care, but it's my birthday on 14th of July. So if you want to you want to send me a card, um, I'm not going to give you my address. So if, if it's meant to be, it'll get here. <laughs> if not, you all know the Facebook groups and pages that you can go yeah. and send all yeah. of your... Congratulations. Uh, and if I'm, not, if, I'm not, if I'm not back next week from wherever my girlfriend's taking me, please send your concerns because <laughs> she might have killed To the same Facebook group. Okay. Um, <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. We will be back on uh, tomorrow. We've got loads of content in terms of Wargamer Online. I've got so much content to release at the moment. I'm just struggling with finishing the voiceovers. I'm going to try and get them done tomorrow. But we've got the, what's the new box set called? No, no fear. First Strike, we've got that video going out. We've got the little magazine that you can get for a fiver with a, a free Primaris as well. So that's got to go out uh, if anyone's interested in those. And then we've got loads of unboxing videos. We'll have the Hobby Hangout on Friday, which will probably be myself and Mike and mm -hmm. maybe Phil if he's okay. And if not, Rachel, um, if Rachel wants to join, I imagine she will. And if we get enough people wanting her to host, I'll let her host it again. Um, other than that, it's business as usual. So have a fantastic rest of your evening and tomorrow, and we'll see you on the next live show. I need see you find, later. I need to find the credit button this time. There we go. See you. See you later. <laughs>